Hey, it's Dan here. This is a follow on from my Compression Basics tutorial. And today we're looking at a use for compression called side chaining. So what is it? Side chaining, also referred to sometimes as ducking, is simply the use of one instrument to control the compressor on another. The compressor still compresses the track it's instantiated on, but rather than the compressor reacting to that particular track, it thinks it's working on something entirely different. In other words, the compressor is ducking the volume of the audio as though it were placed on something else. Side chaining is sometimes incorrectly referred to as parallel compression, and while some of the confusion stems from the fact that the compression is happening in a parallel fashion, it is not the same as parallel compression. Parallel compression is actually a term mastering engineer Bob Katz coined to describe a compression technique which increases the decibel level of quieter passages without affecting the loudest peaks of the audio, whereas side chaining relies on the key or input section of a compressor to work. So how do we do it? We do this by placing a compressor which has a side chain feature available on the track, our output or destination. We then feed an empty bus into this, we enable the sidechain feature by clicking on the key, and then send another track, our source or input, to that empty bus. We then adjust the compressor to make it compress the track the way we desire, which all depends on our applications or reason for using sidechaining, which we'll cover shortly. In the majority of applications though, the sidechain input will usually be the instrument you consider to be more important than the one of which you have placed the compressor on, as you are generally using sidechaining to make the input audio more of a feature by getting the other track out of its way. To what degree you do this, using the attack, release, threshold and ratio controls will determine your use of the compression as an effects unit or simply as a dynamic tool to control the track. Additionally, we can also have the compressor only see the source or input audio between specified high and low frequencies. These are selectable between bell or shelving EQ, which can then be activated by clicking the in button next to them. Most applications of side chaining will be fine if left between 20 Hz and 20 kHz, but this feature can be useful if you only want the compressor to see certain parts of the import audio. That is, without, for example, power-hungry bass frequencies kicking in the compressor too hard unnecessarily. This section of the compressor does not affect the frequencies on the compressed track itself. You are only selecting what the compressor is listening to. To hear what the compressor is listening to, click on the speaker icon. This solos the sound coming into the compressor which enables finer adjustments. Side chaining is useful for a lot of applications. Used in radio or TV commercials, it can turn down the background music and or sound effects every time the voiceover kicks in so that the voice can always be heard above everything else. James Brown Syndrome, a form of Tourette's, is a crippling condition that affects one third of people worldwide. Luckily, that's Funky Cream, a unique blend of natural products guaranteed to reduce the number of embarrassing outbursts. Sex machine in the funky now. Gotcha. Apply liberally to your body to hit it and quit it in no time with Funky Cream. Cream not guaranteed to work at all or be useful in the treatment of other forms such as funkadelicitis. Please seek the advice of a medical professional if symptoms persist. In electronic music, a typical application is to have the kick drum squash every other instrument in an obvious way, using the compressor more like an effects unit where the track starts pumping and breathing in time with the kick drum. Some people also use side chaining to squash a bass guitar using the kick drum, or vice versa, to get the bass drum out of the way of the bass guitar. Instead, I prefer to use EQ for separation unless one instrument should feature more than the other. You can refer to my spectral management video for more on that. Moving into more creative applications, you can place the compressor on a delay, reverb, or other effects unit. For example, a vocal with a long delay can sometimes get cluttered up when adding them together in the mix, as the delay starts to override the vocal part. By sidechaining the delay with the main vocal as the input, 
you can duck the volume of the delay whilst the voice is present and then have it released when it's not going to clash with the voice. This is handy for making sure that the vocal remains clear. Sidechaining also comes in handy when you found a great balance that you don't want to mess up because you're struggling to fit the vocal in with the mix. In the past, I mixed a rock track with full blaring guitars which sounded great with the rest of the band. But as soon as I realised that the vocal wasn't cutting through enough because of the guitars, I tried pulling down the guitars and this of course changed the balance relationship between the guitars and the rest of the band to the detriment of the track. I tried EQing them out of the way of each other but I found that this wasn't quite enough to make the vocal cut through and it also made the guitar sound a little too different. I also wasn't too keen on doing lots of volume automation so I eventually solved this by sidechaining the guitar master with the lead vocals using a very small ratio just to take the tops off the guitars and using a fast attack and medium release. This dropped the guitars down a few decibels when the vocals were present with no apparent volume change on the guitars or upset to the balance and the vocals sat exactly where I wanted them to in the mix. If I had found that the guitars were dropping in volume too much, I would have perhaps considered narrowing the frequencies somewhat using the compressor sidechain EQ section, but as it was, it wasn't an issue. The uses for sidechaining are pretty much limited by your imagination, but keep in mind that all the basic functions of the compressor still apply. So aim for settings that work with your music, whatever the application. Consider all your settings wisely as you would the application of compression without the sidechain function. So thinking solely about the gain control in itself becomes pretty interesting when you just consider it on its own. You could theoretically feed the sidechain input to use it as a trigger for the compressor, turning up the compressor track when the sidechain input gets over a certain threshold, using it similar to an expander I guess, but not quite. Taking that idea further, you could complement the amount of gain you added with some low threshold compression. This meaning that every time the sidechain signal comes in, the track with the compressor gets more compressed without losing too much of the decibels it had. And then when the input signal retreats, the compressor track goes back to being uncompressed. Cool, huh? I haven't used this before, but thinking of an application for it, a good one may be in a hard rock tune that has both quiet verses and loud choruses. You could take the signal coming in from the guitars and feed that into the sidechain component of a compressor on the drum master and have that fatten up the drums with compression when the guitars get too loud. Don't underestimate the power of sidechaining, it's not just something that gets used in electronic music, it can be used just about anywhere. When you get the relationship right with all the settings, it will make your job that much easier and hopefully save your hours of time spent doing volume automation or EQing. So how do you use sidechaining? Post your video response or comment below. I'd love to hear what you guys do too and I look forward to your responses. That pretty much covers side chaining, so be creative and have fun with it. If you have any questions, comments or ideas for further tutorials, please email me at yamahadrums2009 at hotmail.com and please subscribe to remain informed of future video releases. Until next time, happy mixing. <laughs>